Hello, and welcome to Verbling. I'm Teacher Oakley, and once again, it is time for idioms, 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 idioms. Uh, today, we'll be looking at the metaphorical abstract concept that a company is like a ship. Uh, as you probably know, the the golden age of sail, uh, shipping was all, all important to the world's economy for hundreds and hundreds of years. Well, it still is, but in any case, because uh, shipping was so closely related with the econom economics and commerce, there are a great deal of idioms that relate to a company and or business that have to do with a sailing ship and we'll be looking at those related ideas today. Uh, as usual, we'll be, uh, students will be taking turns doing some simple exercises and we'll be talking about the idioms as they come up. All right, business as usual, in other words. <laughs> All right, <laughs> clear sailing today, <laughs> in other words. Okay, Heidi, hi, how are you? Hello, nice to see you again. Uh, nice to see you as well. How are you today? Uh, today it was warm, so I walked to the Chinese restaurant for lunch. Great. Yeah. What did, what did, you, ha what did you have? Oh, it's already Japanese. Uh, so good. Uh, so if I translate. As, uh, vinegar pork. <laughs> vinegar pork. Okay. I got an idea what that is. Vinegar okay. pork and uh, uh, chili, uh, shrimp uh, chili sauce. Oh, yum. One of my favorites. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's porridge. <laughs> okay. Senia, hi. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. Thank you. Great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, have you had lunch yet today, Senia? Only breakfast. Only because breakfast. Because it's morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. still morning. Okay. Yeah. Well, good morning to you. Uh, okay. Let's get started. Plenty of room in the class. If others want to join us, come on in. Anytime. Uh, as we generally have been doing when we've been dealing with these kind of larger metaphorical concepts because we're we're really dealing with a spe very specific concrete image and that is a ship. Uh, we're going to start out by looking at some literal meanings uh, of words that are related to ships so that when we come across the idioms we can get a nice image or visual picture of what we're talking about here. So let's start with some literal meanings of ship words. Uh, okay, the, the concept, the overall concept is the, the idea that employees are like a crew of a ship and the company is like the ship itself and the circumstances that the company is in is, is like the sea or the ocean and there's dangers and uh, various things you have to look out for. Uh, yeah, anyway, so first of all, some very literal meanings here. Uh, mix and match exercise. Um, before we start, let me quickly welcome Ken to the class. Hey, Ken. How are you? Yes, yes hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right, we'll talk to you in a bit. Heidi, ropes. Uh, ropes. Or maybe you use them to secure a sail or a boat. Yes, yes, you do. You use them for, in the old sailing ships, of course, you use ropes for everything. Ropes for the anchor, rope for the sail, rope for to tie things down, etc., etc. Uh, Heidi? Um, yeah? Are, are you good at tying knots? Ooh, I can uh, make 
ribbon. <laughs> a ribbon. <laughs> yeah, ribbon and a button. And someone can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm me for one. <laughs> I can't do that. Okay, but I can tie a clove hitch. I can tie a half hitch. Um, I can, I know a few knots, a square knot. Anyway, um, just because I thought of ropes, ropes go with knots. Okay, when you bend a rope around and wrap it around each other, those are knots. All right, just because I um, I, I thought of a idiomatic expression talking about ropes that I don't think is in the lesson. If you have a naughty problem, it's a difficult problem. It's uh, it's difficult to take apart the problem and fix it. Um, a, a now, naughty problem can be used in terms of business. Yeah, it's co very common, but it, it can be used for other things as well. Anywho, uh, senior, moving on. Um, number two, two. course. Yeah. Uh, direction. Okay. Uh, absolutely. And I have uh, question. Yeah. Uh, in uh, America, it's uh, direction, but in Britain, it's direction. No, I say direction, and I'm very yes. American. Yeah. I, I so direction I, only. I, yeah, I don't say it with a long I. No, no, short I. Direction, direction. Mm -hmm. You have to because the middle syllable stressed, so the first and last syllable are unstressed, so short vowel sounds. Direction. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a course is yes, your direction, which way you're going. That's true. Um. There are other meanings of course. Uh, well, seeing you, what's a golf course? Which are similar. Okay. What? Nothing course. Um, it's we can have in our ed education some course. Oh yeah, it's courses. That's right. Particular disciplines of classes or courses. That that's correct. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, you use course for direction in other ways, like the course of a river, the direction. A golf course, if, if you've ever golfed, you go, you know, hole number one, two, three, four, five. There's a specific way that you kind of wind your way through, through the golf course. Um, an obstacle course, if you're having a race and climbing through a tunnel and climbing over and swinging across the rope and up a wall that's the specific direction or way you have to go that's related to course so lots of collocations with course that have something to do with direction even course actually at like class because it's a specific direction of study that you're um, looking at so even that one kind of related all right uh, oh, uh, let me quickly say hi to Gina hi Gina Hi. Hi. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ken, number three, hands. <laughs> hands move from side to side and up and down. They do? <laughs> they no, can. I, I, <laughs> well, they can. They can. That's true, but I don't think so. Uh, okay. In re okay. In regards to ships, all right. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know okay this is literal but an older meaning don't think about the things that are attached to your arms but related to ships what are hands uh, eh, maybe what yet this looks for you uh, maybe you use them to secure a sail or boat well, you do. You use ropes, but you need to move the ropes with your hands, but it's not a wrong answer. Logically, yeah, that's true. But in the meaning, okay, I'll just throw out the idiom for you. Uh, Ken, all hands on deck. All, all hands are sailors. There you go. <laughs> I, I knew if I gave you that clue, you'd, you'd get it. Yeah, uh, that's it. 
hands. If you're on a boat, if then then yeah, then sailors are referred to as hands, or hands are the sailors, whatever. Okay. But what is the deck? All hands on deck, Gina. I don't know <laughs> the deck. You, you you don't know. Okay. Um. Well, all hands on deck is the expression. That means you want all the sailors. Where would you want all the sailors? What physical place would you probably want the sailors? Um, We've already used the bottom two here. Uh, if your command is all hands on deck. To empty water from a boat. Uh, no, um, the expression, the idiom is all hands on deck. On is a preposition, deck is a noun. So all sailors on noun. What noun? Floor, floor of a boat. Floor, that's, yeah. Not a verb, not move or empty or, or whatever. Yeah, the floor of a boat is called the deck. If you're on a ship, okay, and you're on the deck, basically that's the basic part of a ship. If you're below decks, then maybe there's a cabin or a room underneath uh, the main deck. Main deck, if you're on a big, big ship like a Carnival Cruise Line, they have multiple decks. They, they can have third deck, the fourth deck. Yeah. Okay, so the floor of a ship. All right, Heidi, number five. Bear out and to empty water from the boat. Uh, yeah, referring to ships, yeah, it means you're sinking. <laughs> if you need to bail out, that's not good. Uh, Heidi, what about if you bail out of an airplane? What does that mean? Airplane. I don't know about the airplane. Uh, if you bail out of an airplane, you jump out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Usually yeah. we use it in, uh, for economy. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, that's what we're going to look at that particular idiom. Yeah, we'll be looking at that because it refer refers to economy and business. Right. If the government bails out the banks then the banks don't have enough money and the government actually gives them money or maybe lends them money at a low interest. Right. You're absolutely right. So we use it that way idiomatically. Very close to removing water from a boat. It's an emergency measure to save the boat. An emergency measure to save a company or an economy or a bank. Bail out. And we're going to, we'll see that idiom shortly. But, there's another kind of idiomatic meaning that is close to bail out of a plane, where the plane is, all right, you, all the engines have failed and that plane is going to crash. You're not going to just sit on the plane. If you can jump out with a parachute, of course, you're going to bail out. Um, okay, so that also is used idiomatically if you bail out of a situation, all right, oh, my my relationship with Jennifer was getting too intense. She's too serious for me. I'm not ready to get married. I have to bail out of the relationship. Okay. Well, um, about that, to help from a uh, dangerous situation. Yeah, well, to to help, you know, if I leave Jennifer because I'm afraid of commitment, I'm I'm helping myself, I guess, <laughs> but not really. Really, I'm escaping. You bail out of something that you're a, you consider dangerous, a situation. <laughs> Maybe I'm helping myself. Yeah, okay, possibly. So there's two meanings. I, with the t you know, yeah, when well, you bail out a bank, you're helping them out. But if you bail out of a relationship, or you, uh, oh, uh, we were going to the party, but we bailed out at the last minute. 
okay, we escaped. We we decided not to do it. We didn't do it. Um, we jumped out. Yeah, maybe not so much helping as escaping. Okay, anyway, Senia, six. Ah. Uncharted, not yet on a map. Okay, very good. Often co-located with uncharted territory or an uncharted area. Yeah, that's it. Uh, obviously used to mean uh, unknown. Um, okay, uh, senior, again, remove the prefix and the suffix, chart. In nautical terms, by the way, nautical means has something to do with the ocean, the sea, and ships. It's nautical. Uh, in nautical terms, what is a chart? Mm, chart, it's uh, some kind of map. It's a map. That's it. You got it. Absolutely. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, on a ship, you don't ask to see a map. You ask to see the chart. They've got a different word for everything in, in a boat. Uh, Ken, number seven. To rock. Destroyed on rocks. No. No. <laughs> Des no. Okay, if you're listening to really great rock and roll, mm -hmm. you no. might. No. What might mm -hmm. you do? <laughs> mm -hmm. From uh, Move from side to side and up and down. Yeah, all right. You're rocking out. Way to go, Ken. Rock it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay, all right. Rock with a boat, which is our initial idea, really. Uh -huh. um, when a ship rocks, the waves move it back and forth, up and down in the waves, you know, uh, on the peak of a wave, down into the trough of a wave. And, of course, you move left to right. It moves you around, all mm -hmm. right? This is where rock and roll comes from, okay? The whole yeah. idea of motion... A rhythmic motion. Okay. Rock on. All right. Uh, <laughs> yep. Okay. Gina, number eight. Wreck. Yeah. Um, destroyed on rocks. Yep. Wrecked. Destroyed on rocks. That's it. Well, of course, wrecked, he doesn't have to be on rocks. Okay. I mean, shipwreck is a very obviously common word. We don't say ship collision, ship destroy. The word is shipwreck, so we usually use wreck for for cars. I mean, for you know, for ships, but we can use wreck for cars. It's very common as well. Yeah, if my car is a wreck, it's not in good shape. In America. Uh, when your car breaks down and you have to have uh, have somebody bring your car to another place to get fixed, uh, that car is called a tow truck because it tows your car or a wrecker, very commonly. We need to call a wrecker. And it doesn't matter even, even if there's even if you don't have a crash or any an accident, you it's still a wrecker. They're the same thing, tow truck wrecker. Okay, wreck. Um, we can also use for about people. Okay, Gina, what is a nervous wreck? I'm a nervous wreck. Um, nervous wreck. Um, Whoops. I don't know. Um, something like a movement uh, that you do frequently, like a tick. It's a good guess. It's interesting. No, um, and uh, okay, a nervous wreck is uh, just a, a phrase we use to talk about somebody who's very, very nervous about something. That's it. They're they're pretty much well. They're pretty much they're so nervous they can't think straight anymore. Maybe they're paralyzed with fear. Maybe they're they just can't think logically because they're so nervous where is my son 
It's four in the morning. I'm a nervous wreck. I'm so worried about him. Like that. Uh, okay. Um, just for fun, can any... All right. Uh, just some other words, possibly. Uh, can anybody tell me what uh, what is a bathroom called on a ship? Does anybody know? No? No idea? If you have to go to the bathroom on a ship, you better ask, where is the head? That's right, head. Just like the head on your, on your neck, on your shoulders. Where's the head? Okay. Now you know, if you're on a ship. Okay. Uh, all right. Some extra notes here. If you weather a storm in a boat... Um, what? Huh? This doesn't make sense. If you weather a storm, it means that the storm is so serious that you decide not to keep sailing ahead. That's not true. If you weather a storm, it means you made it through the storm. This, Sorry, this is not right. Um, you take shelter from a storm. That means that you decide to move your boat somewhere safer, like a bay. Uh, okay, any... Any port in a storm, for example, has to do with danger to a ship um, from weather. Uh, and we use this idiomatically, any port in a storm. Um, for example, if you're an immigrant escaping a war, you probably should be, at least, uh, happy to be anywhere that's safe and where bullets aren't flying anywhere. It doesn't matter. We use the idea any port in a storm because maybe it's not the best possible conditions, um, but it's better than having bullets fired at you. It's better to be in a cold, dark cave with no food than have people, people trying to blow you up, for example. You might use this phrase, any port in a storm. Um, okay. Uh, this last part is true. I don't like this. Weather a storm means you went through a rough time, but you came out of it, at least for American English. Perhaps this is a case of British English. It means something completely different. This is quite different for me as an American. You weather a storm. You went through a really difficult period, but you managed um, to get through it. The interesting thing here, or one interesting element, is that weather, notice, can be used as a verb, which is true. All right, let's get to more. There's lots and lots of idioms that deal with this, so let's get cracking here and start looking at some. Fill in the blank exercise using, uh, using these idioms. All right, let's do it. Um, Heidi, number one. The half-year figures are looking very good. I'd say oh, we were uh, for the best year in our company history. G, it all hand on deck. Mm, no. No. You are on board. You're getting closer. <laughs> on course. On course. That's right. Our course is set. Okay. When you set a course, then you're planning exactly which direction you're going to go, or you're thinking about which direction you're going to go. So, all right. You're halfway through the year. Okay. Our course looks good. Uh, the, all right, our direction looks good for the company. That's the idea. So we're on course. Um, you would use this most often in business, but for anything, okay, maybe you're trying to raise money for cancer or something. You're part of a charitable organization. It would be common. Well, that's business related. We're on course to make $100,000 this year, to raise $100,000. Um, 
but it can be it can be used for other things often dealing with money and finance and business senior number two it's not just you that's worried about redundancy we are all in the same boat yeah okay what's the meaning here we are all worried about redundancy <laughs> exactly and what is redundancy uh, that we can be fired yeah uh, well basically yes um, very British Americans do not use this terminology we don't Americans never use redundant or redundancy um, of course there's a big difference in English both British and American English fired means that you were forced to leave because you did something terribly wrong either you did not perform um, you did not perform probably up to prearranged metrics or you did something terribly wrong you spit on your boss or something if you're made redundant or as Americans would say if you're laid off or let go uh, that means that there's not enough business for the company to keep paying you so it's not your fault in other words uh, so you're you're made redundant is what British say and Americans say you're laid off or uh, you are given your pink slip is another very idiomatic way to say you're laid off. You're given your pink slip. Uh, this is a very much an American thing where they actually give you a pink. It's a copy. There's a yellow copy, a white copy, a pink copy. They actually give tell you that you no longer work for the company by giving you a pink piece of paper. So it's actually the idiom comes from a very physical action. But anyway, okay, so much for redundancy. We're all in the same boat. Yes, it's used for business. It can be used for other situations as well. Um, okay, whatever. Where, wherever you have a common situ a group with a common situation. It can be any situation, whatever. You're, you're trapped on a desert island. You're all in the same boat. You're whatever the economy of your country is tanking and things are looking bad for the economy for everyone you're all in the same boat um, whatever you're recently divorced and you're with three other guys playing golf on the weekend you might say well we're all in the same boat uh, okay so it can be used for different situations can can number I mean letter whoops Number three, what am I doing? Yeah, number three. Okay. Is this your first day here? Well, don't worry. If you have any questions, ask DI. Nobody, nobody, maybe A, knows the ropes like her. She's been here over for 20 years. Yeah, okay, very good. You are correct. What does that mean? She knows the ropes. She's been here 20 years. She knows the ropes. Maybe he, she knows uh, kind of a lot of uh, things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Things. Yeah. yeah and, and by, okay, your general term things was actually quite accurate. Maybe she has skills that are necessary. Maybe she knows secret ways of doing things. Maybe she knows about people's personalities and who can be told to do what. Maybe she knows unwritten rules of the company. Um, yeah, all of those things. Mm -hmm. That's right. So a lot of stuff, a lot of things. Okay, know the ropes. There's a lot of variations on this. You, by the way, ask Di. This is short for Diane, like Lady Di. Yeah, okay. like Princess Di, Princess Diane. Okay, um, lots of variations on know the ropes. She knows the ropes. She will teach you the ropes. You need to learn the ropes. 
Okay, so various verbs go with the ropes um, in a number of different idioms, depending on uh, how we say it, but it's basically the same idea. You, you know how to do things at work, whether, and, and that can mean specific skills and um, the process of how to do things, but it can also mean like knowing who to ask for help, okay, know where to go, secretly have a cigarette, whatever. You, when you're learning the ropes, all the little things, everything about how to do a job. Um, almost exclusively used about work, but it could be used about other things. Um, I don't think it is very often, but possibly about other things like um, maybe activities or something um, where you would need a certain set of skills. Probably, usually where there's, yeah, well, okay. I don't know. Maybe skydiving, for example. Oh, he'll teach you the ropes as a general idea. He'll teach you how it's done. Uh, all right, Gina, number four. I'm, I'm afraid that we've got four people off sick this morning, so it's uh, all hands on deck. That's it. Okay, nobody, nobody below lying down on their bunk sleeping. Okay, nobody can take it easy. Everybody must be working at all times is the idea. All hands on deck. Everyone prepared to work now. Uh, that, that's it. That's the idea. Uh, again, obviously often used in business as in the example. Possible to use it other places, especially in case of an emergency. Uh, maybe if you work for the fire department or something. Uh, oh, it's all hands on deck. A skyscraper's on fire, or or maybe a major political figure is coming to town, and you're a policeman. It's all hands on deck. Everyone has to be uh, out on the streets protecting this political figure. Whatever. All right. Well, those are those are business, aren't they? Those are work, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. There you go. It's hard for me to get away from that. All right, Heidi, number five. Uh, we are in the middle of the world recession. Interest rates are too high, and the consumer confidence is at all, an all-time low. Let's just keep calm and uh, wait for the storm to pass. Okay. So this is similar to earlier when I was talking about weather the storm. Mm -hmm. Wait for the storm to pass. Get through it. Just get through it. That's it. Once again, can be used. It's often used in business, but it can be used for other things. All right. Often used to talk about the economy, but it could be used for other things. Um, uh, I, I don't like possibly emotional things. Oh. Okay, uh, whatever. Mom is really upset because something happened to her coworker, and so you can't talk to her right now. You know, just wait for the storm to pass. Is sometimes used to talk about wait till people calm down because they're over emotional. But again, usually you're talking about money and economic matters. Uh, all right, Ken, number six. Miss Blake and her team of accounts make sure that no one penny is wasted. Wasted. They they run a tight ship. I I captain. All right. Okay. What's the meaning here? Run, they run a tight ship. Maybe save the money. Well, okay. Well, okay. I, I understand why you say that because tight definitely has a, a strong co-location with money, a strong relationship to money. If somebody's tight, 
uh, they don't like to spend money. They're miserly. They're um, Scrooge, uh, a tightwad, somebody who doesn't want to spend money. They're they're um, they are not generous. But that's not exactly the meaning here. Tight here. Uh, well, okay, uh, Ken, let me mm -hmm. use language that you, maybe you can uh, relate to. Do you know what it means when you say, oh, the band was terrific, the rock band was really tight tonight? Really great. They were great. They were working as a team really well mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. all right? Everyone was right on note. Everyone's timing was perfect. Mm -hmm. so when we talk about a band being tight, that's what we mean. And when we talk about a tight ship, that's what we mean. We mean everyone works together really efficiently and mm -hmm. well and perfectly, no mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's more of the idea of tight in this idiom. So although our example talks about money, really, that's not really the idea of this particular idiom. It's more about being really efficient and kind of being strict and efficient. Um, no deviations, no mistakes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. They run a tight ship. So this is very commonly used about anybody who's a manager anywhere. You could be the manager of McDonald's. Oh, he runs a tight ship. You whatever you can be the coach of a football team he runs a tight ship very common expression used obviously to talk about anybody usually talk about a manager or whoever's in charge of a group of people um even mom you know mom runs a tight ship everybody has their chores to do at home everybody has their little jobs they have to got, get done and mom makes sure that everybody does them. Mom runs a tight ship. She's in charge. All right, Gina, number seven. When you get the new custo customers on board, keep them. Yep, okay. Great. Uh, you got it, that's it, okay. This has to do with ships, but the way I think about it, and, and you know, with idioms, sometimes it's hard to tell the history and where exactly the idiom comes from. But speaking of business and ships, there's a whole litany, there's a whole progression of idioms that have to do with getting customers. Um, okay, so Gina, okay, when you're when you're trying to catch fish, uh, what are you doing? I use um, uh, the right uh, uh, stuff, instrument. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, okay. Well, uh, all right, you're, you're fishing. You can say, I'm fishing for customers. All right, wait. Well, we have that term fishing for a certain type of hacking where they're trying to take your money and trick you, right? But that's usually with pH. But also fishing for customers or if you're angling for a deal, angling is another word for fishing, okay? Yeah, you need the right equipment, but even more, you need the right bait. So sometimes we talk about bait when we're trying to get a customer. He baited the hook. Oh, he's baited the hook. Hopefully we can land this customer. Um, okay, you use something to entice the customer. When you, when it looks like the customer is interested, you hook the customer, just like you hook a fish. Oh, I think he's hooked. And then you've got the customer hooked. He's in interested. You reel him in which is what you do when you're fishing. You reel the fish in, pulling him, winding up the, the fish line to pull the fish in towards you. Same, same exact words we use for customer. Oh, he's reeling him in. And then when you land the customer, you land a fish. If you're fishing from land, then when the fish comes on the land out of the water, you land him. When he comes 
out of the water onto a ship, he comes on board. Everyone who's on a ship is on board. So it is. this is actually one of a long litany of consecutive actions which you do when you're fishing, which we frequently use to talk about getting customers. The whole process, word, every verb you use in the process can be used for getting a customer, basically. And basically the last one is on board. Um, we actually also have the phrase onboarding. When you have a customer, he's paid, but for example, you provide a service. So you need to onboard that customer, um, meaning you need to explain to the customer how to go about using your service or explain how your service works. They've already agreed, they've already bought, they're already paying customers. The onboarding process in a business is when you're kind of explaining how everything works to the customer. All right, Heidi, uh, number eight. Uh, all our planning of the past few months had been uh, wrecked by the new MD who, uh, who had decided that nothing would change. Yeah, wrecked, <laughs> destroyed, ruined. You could actually use several words here. Has been destroyed, has been ruined. Okay, Heidi, what's an MD? Mm, I don't know. Me. <laughs> yeah, I, well, in this case, I really hate this acronym because when I see this acronym instantly, to me, it means doctor, doctor of medicine. Um, when I, so when I see Robert Smith, MD, I know it's Dr. Robert Smith, okay? But that's not what it means here. Here it's related to business. They're, they're using it for managing director. Yeah, in this case. Uh, so very confusing, but there you go. It's also the abbreviation for Maryland. <laughs> Not that that would matter. A state of in United States. So there you go. A very confusing little acronym. All right. But wait, that's not all. There's a whole lot more. Oh, my goodness, and we're running out of time. We got a lot more idioms here. So let's jump right in. In this particular exercise, it is in the, um, it is in the form of a dialogue where one person speaks and the arrow indicates a response to basically show you how it should sound in a conversation. Ken, can you try Luke, number one? Yeah. Look, I'm not going to be treated like this any longer. I've had enough. Now calm down. Don't rock the boat. Yeah, okay. Very good. Don't rock the boat. What is the meaning? Don't swing the boat. Yeah, well, yeah. But what is the idiomatic meaning uh, in, like in a business? Think of this in a business sense. One person says, I'm not going to be treated like this any longer. The boss treats me terrible. I've had enough. The other person responds, calm down. Don't rock the boat. What are they really saying? Don't cause the trouble. Don't it's cause trouble. That's it. Yeah. Especially don't cause trouble that will affect me. <laughs> if, if we're in a boat and you rock the boat, Ken, I might fall overboard. That's really the idea. Don't rock the boat. Don't make things worse, which will make things worse for everyone. Is yeah, that you you got the idea. Don't make trouble, but don't make trouble with me, which makes it worse for everyone. Mm -hmm. Is the idea? Yeah. Gina, number two. Our cash flow problem is getting serious. In fact, uh, we have reached a crisis. Don't worry. Mm, I'm sure the bank will bail us uh, out. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, Gina, have you heard of the idea too big to fail? <laughs> yes, yes. In reference Even to banks. Even if uh, you 
is yeah. not true anymore. I hope it's not true, Gina. Between me and you, uh, I hope you're right. Um, not possible to bail out is is probably going to be the new mantra. Um, instead of too big to fail, <laughs> too big to not fail may be the new mantra. But anyway, yeah. Right, back in 2008, in the United States at least, a number of banks, I know this happened in other countries as well. Anyway, a number, a number, of, a, a number of banks and financial institutions basically were going to go bankrupt, so the government bailed them out with billions of dollars of my money. <laughs> Well, my tax money, anyway. Yeah, as you can tell, I wasn't really thrilled. Heidi, number three. I think the new range is going to do well in the South American market. Yes, but let's take it slowly. Um, We're just going to have to weather the storm. Mm, no, that would indicate there's something bad ahead. We're just going to have to get through it. Um, this person is saying, oh, it's a new market. I think it's going to be good. They have a positive attitude, so they're not looking forward to something negative. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I think this new market that we've never been in before is going to be well. But the other person is saying, wait a minute. We ought to be put into it though. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's basically the idea. We need to work together. We should be partners. That has nothing to do with it, this mm -hmm. context. Uh, it's un uncharted territory for us. That's it. We don't know what it's like. It's a new market. Very common terminology for this very, very specific idea. Uncharted territory. Um, how, okay, well, uh, all right. In business, it's very specific, but we can use the idea uncharted territory for anything. Literally, if you're going hiking, I mean, really concretely, physically, you're going hiking and you've never been there, you can say that's uncharted territory. We've never been there. We don't know what's there. Or whatever, you're even driving, doesn't matter. So it can be physical. Or um, maybe you're going to do something you've never done. You're going to go to a rock concert, and you've never been to a rock concert in your life. You could say, well, it's uncharted territory for me. I don't quite know what to expect. So actually, strangely enough, in business, it's very, very specific. When you move into a market, you don't know. But more broadly, in the world, it's a very general idiom. Anything you haven't done before. Okay, Ken, number four. They can't cut our holidays and our overtime rate. It's just ridiculous in this day and age. The whole staff is furious. You're right. We ought to be playing together. Uh, okay. Well, that works for me. Uh, okay. We ought to work together. Uh, oh, no, no. That, is, that, that kind of works, but okay. There's. All right. Wait a minute. There's a better answer here. Um, this person is obviously angry by their use of uh, repetitive... Um, exclamation points. <laughs> the main key phrase here, Ken, the whole staff is furious. Mm -hmm. All right. What does furious mean? Uh, angry. Very angry. Extreme angry. Yes, that's correct. So, the whole staff is angry. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Maybe a strike or something. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Which, if you go on strike on a ship, it's called a mutiny. Uh-huh, I see. Mutiny. Okay. 
well, it's a little stronger than a strike. It's not that you refuse to work. It's that you grab the captain and you kill him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a little stronger on a ship, really. Not necessarily kill him. Maybe you tie him up and and imprison him in the, his cabin or something. You take over physically in a mutiny. That's what a mutiny is. Okay, there's going to be a mutiny. Um, the idea idiomatically is it basically like a mini revolution in a company. Mm -hmm. I have actually seen this happen. It was quite amusing. <laughs> where the entire staff of a restaurant where I was eating, they mutinied. Everybody walked out. The bartender, the cooks, the waiters and waitresses, they literally walked out in the middle of in the middle of serving people uh, because of whatever their grievances were. It was a mutiny. <laughs> what happened, Nick, after that? Well, I, the the owners had to give back the people their money oh. <laughs> for food that they ordered and didn't come. Or uh, I mean, they didn't charge anybody. <laughs> they they didn't not give them back their money. Nobody paid, and the restaurant you pay at the end. So they just had to explain to all the customers, I'm sorry, but we've had some problems. And um, first they, you know, first they said, okay, uh, well, let's go talk to the staff. Maybe we can get them to come back. So they told all of us, I was a customer. Mm -hmm. They told all of us, okay, just please give us 10 minutes. We can fix mm -hmm. the problem. I was terribly amused by this whole thing, by the way, because I had already gotten my food and I was eating. <laughs> Great. Wow, entertainment. <laughs> Dinner and a floor show. Uh, anyway, they couldn't get anybody to come back. So then they had to come back and say, okay, we're, we apologize. Uh, please come back and see us. All of your meals are on the house, mm -hmm. meaning they're free. There's another idiom, on the house. So I got a, I got a free cheeseburger and fries out of it. You know, I'm, I was good. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever I was eating. Yeah. Anyway, it was a mutiny. Uh Okay, uh, Gina, number five. I don't think that the Maximedia are going to survive. Do you? No, I agree. From what I've heard, um, they are just about on the rocks. That's it. Excellent. Okay, now this is an interesting little idiom because, yes, it's used about business and it has that that idea of a ship. Um, but m more often than not, when we use about on the rocks or they're on the rocks, we use it to talk about a relationship, a romantic relationship. Husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. Oh, haven't you heard? Their relationship is on the rocks. Um, meaning they're having, you know, it, it's just about over. It's just about wrecked. Uh, yeah, definitely not good. So I would expect to hear this more often about a relationship than about business, but it can be used for both. Heidi, number six. Okay, uh, business is still very poor. Uh, everyone is uh, reporting a 15% uh, downtown this year. I don't know what we can do about it. No, I think we uh, uh, we ought to be pulling together. Well, okay, there's no contrast here. We we all right. We need to work together. That's a good idea when you're in trouble, but. The concept here is there's nothing we can do about it. Um, mm. I don't know what we can do about it. There's a downturn. We cannot take an action. So, yeah, so pulling together won't do anything. That's okay. So, the other person is, okay. I know there's no, we can't do that. What's that? First person said we can't do anything. But yeah, that's right. No, we can't do that. No, actually, this is confusing. I, I know this is confusing. Uh, the first person said, I, I don't know what we can do about it. It means we can't do anything. But the second yeah. person said, no, I 
I can do it. So no. The positive should be positive. The first person said negative, uh, but the second person yeah. no, so it means positive. No, it doesn't. This is very confusing. I understand that. Okay, this is very confusing. This uh, this no here is actually agreeing. There's nothing we can do. Um, I know this is strange, but okay. I don't know what to do. No, I think you're right. There's nothing we can do, which is basically the answer is where. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, e, we're just going to have to weather the storm. I don't think there's anything we can do. Nope, I think we're just going to have to weather the storm. He's agreeing. I agree. No, there is nothing we can do. I know that's that's very confusing. I understand. It's weird. You know, he could just as well say, "Yes, I think we just have to cover weather the storm." It's it's weird. Yeah, sorry. It's a bad confusing example. It's strangely enough it's actually an agreement there. Yeah, confusing example. Sorry for that one. Uh, Ken, number seven. There are too many people in this company with different ideas. We really ought, ought to agree about where we are going. Yes, I think we ought to be pulling together. That's it. Pulling together like pulling the ropes together like sailors. Working together. That's it. Gina, last one, number eight. Have you heard uh, the rumors about uh, Maxwell's? Their best stuff have gone. Yes, uh, everyone's trying to get out. Um, uh, it's like uh, rats leaving a sinking ship. Yeah, that's it. Very common idiom. Everyone's leaving while they can is the idea. Uh, yeah, because the idea that Maxwell's going to go out of business. All right, if everybody leaves a country because the country is just really going downhill, you could say the same thing. Often used for business, can be used for other things. As usual, I'm over time again. So thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And, uh, thank you.